Does that sound good? Loud and clear. Okay, good.
Good morning. Welcome to New Durham Baptist Church. We're glad that you're here today. Uh, let's all stand. We're going to be opening up in a word of prayer this morning. And um, I do trust that you had a good Sunday school hour. It's always a wonderful opportunity to search the scriptures, to find out new things. And we learned about Gideon and how God had taken his army of 33,000 down to 300 because God did not want them to boast in pride about how they beat the Midianites, but God did it, right? It's the same thing in our lives. God wants the glory in our lives, right? Uh, and so we just need to learn to live by faith. We're going to talk about that today. Yes, last week, we talked about uh, fleecing, you know, putting fleeces out there, you know, to, to feel and to hope and to see what the Lord's will is. But today, we're going to talk about living by faith. And, uh, and so I do trust that our faith is going to grow uh, from the message this morning. Uh, let's pray, and then John's going to come and lead us in some songs this morning. Uh, and uh, we're looking forward to a wonderful day in the Lord. Father, we thank you for your goodness today, dear Lord. Dear Father, we thank you for sending your Son, dear Father, to be our propitiation uh, for our sins, dear Lord. We thank you that he died and rose again on the third day, dear Father. We're thankful that if we put our faith and trust in him, dear Father, we will uh, become the children of God. And not only that, after we get saved, we have the Holy Spirit move into our hearts and into our lives, dear Lord. We're so thankful for the gift of the Holy Spirit, dear Father. I pray today that you would help us to uh, be encouraged and strengthened by your Spirit. I pray that... If there's someone here today that does not know Christ as their Savior, that they would come to a saving knowledge today. Those of us who are saved, dear Father, would you please encourage and strengthen us, dear Lord. Dear Father, as we look at the world, dear Father, uh, our economy has been very uh, challenging for a long period of time. Dear Lord, there's chaos all throughout the world. We think of even Israel this morning who is under attack, dear Father, uh, from Iran, and dear Lord, uh, we pray for them and, and their protection. We think of um, uh, the Ukraine being invaded by um, uh, Putin and um, uh, Russia, and, and we think of Taiwan, dear Lord, and, and we just see, dear Father, that the Bible tells us, and I know that we don't live by sight, we live by faith, but the Bible tells us that when we see all these things happening, that our redemption draweth nigh. Help us, dear Lord, to continue to uh, live by faith. We are saved by faith, but we also need to live by faith. I pray this morning that you would encourage and strengthen each and every one of us as we lift up our voices to you. Help us to worship you, give you thanks and praise. For we ask these things in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. All right, as we continue standing, John's going to come. I encourage you today to lift up your voices and to worship the Lord in song this morning. <clears throat> Amen. And we're going to sing, The Light of the World is Jesus, page 262. Light of the World is Jesus. The whole world was lost in the darkness of sin. The light of the world is Jesus. Like sunshine at noonday, his glory shone in. The light of the world is Jesus. Come to the light, tis shining for thee. Sweetly the light has dawned upon me. Once I was blind, but now I can see. 
the light of the world is Jesus. No darkness have we who in Jesus abide. The light of the world is Jesus. We walk in the light when we follow our guide. The light of the world is Jesus. Come to the light, tis shining for thee. Sweetly the light has dawned upon me. Once I was blind, but now I can see. The light of the world is Jesus. Ye dwellers in darkness with sin-blinded eyes, the light of the world is Jesus. Go wash at his bidding and light will arise. The light of the world is Jesus. Come to the light, tis shining for thee. Sweetly the light has dawned upon me. Once I was blind, but now I can see. The light of the world is Jesus. No need of the sunlight in heaven, we're told. The light of the world is Jesus. The Lamb is the light of the city of gold. The light of the world is Jesus. Come to the light, tis shining for thee. Sweetly the light has dawned upon me. Once I was blind, but now I can see. The light of the world is Jesus. Amen. Now, page 267. Yes, I know. Page 267. <laughs> Come ye sinners, lost and hopeless, Jesus' blood can make you free. For he saved the worst among you, when he saved a wretch like me. And I know, yes I know, Jesus' blood can make the vilest sinner clean. And I know, yes, I know, Jesus' blood can make the vilest sinner clean. To the faint, he giveth power. Through the mountains makes a way. Findeth one. Turn in the desert, turns the night to golden day. And I know, yes I know, Jesus' blood can make the vilest sinner clean. And I know, yes I know, Jesus' blood can make the vilest sinner clean. In temptation he is near thee, holds the powers of hell at bay, guides you to the path of safety, gives you grace for every day. And I know, yes I know, Jesus' blood can make the vilest sinner clean. And I know, yes, I know, Jesus' blood can make the vilest sinner clean. He will keep thee while the ages roll throughout eternity. No and hell ages all must work for good to thee and I know 
Yes, I know. Jesus' blood can make the vilest sinner clean. And I know. Yes, I know. Jesus' blood can make the vilest sinner clean. Amen. Now page 288. I am resolved. Page 288. I am resolved no longer to linger, charmed by the world's delight. Things that are higher, things that are nobler, these have the Lord my side. I will hasten to Him, hasten so glad and free. Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to Thee. I am resolved to go to the Savior, leaving my sin and strife. He is the true one, He is the just one, He hath the words of life. I will hasten to him, hasten so glad and free. Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to thee. I am resolved to follow the Savior, faithful and true each day. Heed what he saith, do what he willeth, he is the living way. I will hasten to him, hasten so glad and free. Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to thee. Amen. Now page 292. Let him have his way with thee. And on the second verse, we'll shake hands. Page 292. Would you live for Jesus and be always pure and good? Would you walk with him within the narrow room? Would you have him bear your burden, carry all your load? Let him have his way with thee. His power can make you what you ought to be. His blood can cleanse your heart and make you free. His love can fill your soul and you will see. T'was best for him to have his way with thee. Would you have him make you free and follow at his call? Would you know the peace that comes by giving all? Would you have him save you so that you need never fall? Let him have his way with thee. His power can make you what you ought to be. His blood can cleanse your heart and make you free. His love can fill your soul and you will see. T'was best for him to have his way with thee. We may shake hands now.
Let's make our way back to our seats now and we'll sing the last verse, third and final verse. kingdom find a place of constant rest would you prove him true each providential test would you in his service labor always at your best let him have his way with thee his power can make you what you ought to be his blood can cleanse your heart and make you free his love can fill your soul and you will see twas best for him to have his way with thee amen pastor will come and make announcements now all right good to have your seats welcome welcome to new Dorm baptist church we're glad that you're here today anybody visiting with us for the first time i i see some returning visitors and it's good to have you today we're glad that you're anybody visiting for the first time no first-time visitors. Well, welcome once again. A warm welcome to New Dorm Baptist Church. Aren't you glad you came in this morning and it was clean? The church was clean. The church was looking good, smelling good. The, the grass was cut outside. I, I bet you nobody even paid attention. I don't know, did you? Did you pull up and see the grass nice and cut and all of that? Praise the Lord for those who um, help out and work around here. And uh, I haven't seen David. David was picking up trash. You know, until you've cleaned the church once or twice, you don't really realize about all the things that are just all around, right? And, uh, but once you clean it once or twice, you realize, hey, who put that there? Hey, how did that get there? Hey. And, uh, oh, I see a fishy. I see a fishy over here, not a Nemo fishy. A, um, uh, a uh, uh, what do you call those? A cheddar cheese fishy. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, it's good to be here today. And uh, we're glad that you're here this morning. Every Sunday morning at 10 a.m., I want to encourage you to come to Sunday school. Our nation is, has lost its moorings. It's lost its way. Because many people claim to be Christian and they claim to know Christ, but they don't know the Word of God. Remember, you know, salvation is one thing. Salvation gets you a home in heaven, but knowing the Word of God gets you a productive and a prosperous life here on earth, Okay. Uh, you must know and do the will of God. In order to know the will of God, that's what Sunday school is. Many people say, I'm a Christian, right? They got a beer in one hand, they got a cigarette in another hand, and they're, you're talking to them, and it's Sunday, and they're not even at church. Well, you should be at church. Amen. <laughs> but, you know they, 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 you know, they say they're a Christian, and they're cursing. They're using foul language and, and things of that nature. And I'm not saying that... that um, you know, work saves us, but I'm just saying they don't know any better. And the reason why they don't know any better is because they don't know the Word of God. The Word of God tells us that now that we're saved, the Holy Spirit moves in. He cleanses us and He changes us. So that's important. Uh, every Sunday morning at 10 a.m., we have Sunday school. Brother Michael does a wonderful job. Sister Deanne loves to have your children. Uh, she's always looking for them. And, and then, of course, the adults are here in the morning service. We learned about Gideon today. Uh, and this morning, we'll be, we'll be looking at Gideon also. Uh, every Sunday morning at 10 a.m., we're going to talk about faith today. Uh, we're gathered together to worship the Lord. But also, last week, we looked at fleecing, putting fleeces out there. God, if it's your will, then by 7 o'clock tonight, you need to make you know, the iron turn on automatically. I'll leave it plugged in, but you turn it on automatically. If the iron turns on it before 7 o'clock, I'll know. You say, that sounds ridiculous. Yeah, and so does whatever you tell God. That's ridiculous to God, too. God doesn't, God doesn't live by fleeces. He lives by faith. He wants us to live by faith. And faith really comes down to obedience, obeying the Word of God. And so we're going to talk about that. Sunday night, tonight, 5 p.m., if you're able to make it back, uh, Pastor Walter will be here, and he'll be preaching at 5 p.m. Every Wednesday night at uh, 7.30, we have prayer and Bible study. If you're able to make it, please come on out and be a part of our uh, prayer and Bible study. Uh, very important as uh, our nation you know, needs to be uh, uh, turned towards the Lord during these uh, challenging times. Our missionaries of the month are the Joseph family. 
Uh, they are missionaries in Trinidad, uh, and we need to be praying for them and their health. Uh, and then also we have um, uh, Pastor Lacho. Uh, every year about this time, we take up a love offering that's on the front there. Pastor Lacho is, is our own missionary sent out of New Durham Baptist Church. He is in, uh, in Grove, Guyana. Grove and Friendship, they have two different churches there. They're doing well. Last Sunday, he texted me. He was so happy. He said, Pastor, he said, I led five adults to the Lord in the, after the morning service. One is a blessing. He, had, he led five. Praise God. Amen. So pray uh, for them. Pray for the ministry there. And... Um, uh, continue to be faithful here so that we can continue to work around the world. Uh, we do have a website. It's newdormbaptist.org. You can uh, go there. You can also go on YouTube, uh, and uh, you can uh, view all of our services, past and present. Uh, that's all on the back information there, okay? Um, if you're going to uh, give tithes and offerings, I don't mention this all the time, but in the back, it would be a great help for you to fill out a white envelope in the back there. Uh, Brother Vance is back there, and, and uh, he, uh, he, he is very talented, but he can't read minds. So, you know, if you give a check and it doesn't say where it needs to go to, then he can't read your mind. Fill it out. You can put your tithe. You can make a one check out for your tithe, your missions, all of those things, okay? Um, you can make it all out in one check, but on the check and on the envelope, you need to make it um, known where you want those monies to go, okay? Um, and so upcoming events, we have prayer breakfast. There is a sign-up sheet, and uh, I'm going to give that. If I could have one of our ushers come forward, uh, we'll give that. And I need you to sign up. Now, um, we, we will be having prayer breakfast April 27th. Sign up. It is not just a men's or ladies it's all together, okay? We're going to have breakfast. We'll pray. Then we'll get out and we'll uh, do some witnessing. We'll give out gospel tracts. Uh, we'll have some folks staying behind to clean and to get things uh, organized here. So sign up and come on out uh, for that, okay? Many hands uh, make light work. Uh, sign up. Um, <clears throat> we have um, silent word ministries, um, a guest preacher by the name of Jacob Roth will be here. Uh, he is a hearing man, uh, but he is losing his hearing. He's been working with deaf people for over 20 years, and he will be here on Sunday, May 19th, all day. So invite folks out. This will uh, be our revival. I know it's only one day. We're not going to have Saturday, but Sunday, uh, May 19th. Mark your calendar. Come on out. Uh, and be a part of that, okay? Be in prayer, of course, for our deaf ministry. Uh, we, we certainly could use some more interpreters, and uh, as uh, we see the future and the church growing, we certainly, uh, and I know Colleen, Sister Colleen, would enjoy having uh, some help. And so um, please uh, be in prayer for that, okay? That's one of the reasons why he's coming here, is to uh, evaluate and to look at how we can better organize and how we can better um, get the gospel out uh, to the deaf community, but also uh, to pray about some, finding some new, uh, some more interpreters, because we, we certainly need um, interpreters. Okay, uh, first Sunday of the month fellowship, there's also a sign-up sheet here. When you come up and get the offering, you can take this. We need to pass this around. Uh, I enjoyed last Sunday's fellowship. It was uh, a wonderful um, uh, time of fellowship. The food was just outstanding. I, I thought, uh, you know, it, it was, you, you say, well, because it was from all over the place. I don't know, just the foods that I had um, uh, got, I, I mean, all over the world. I shouldn't say all over the place, <laughs> right? I found a little bit in the corner over here, a little bit by the bathroom. No, okay, no thank you. Um, but uh, that woke some of you up. I heard you laugh. All right. But um, it, was, it was tasty. It was good. It was uh, from all different places and, and all of that. And so anyway, that, and not only that, not only was it good, there was enough. Amen. I'll say that again. Not only was it good, there was enough. And so um, we praise the Lord for those who brought things. And if you come, we encourage you to bring something. Okay. Now, I do need to deal with two important things uh, somewhat tied with the fellowship one is, is that after every service, 
if you would please, uh, we, we love children. I was looking out at this young girl here, um, and she was smiling at me during the so, uh, song service. I was smiling back at her. We love children. I love children. One thing that is difficult, though, is, is to see children getting themselves in trouble. They leave a mess behind, right? So clean up after I tell folks, if you're going to bring food for your children, that's fine, but you need to clean up after them, okay? Clean up after them. But the other thing is is that, and I just want to deal with this briefly, I need to see all the parents, um, all the parents after the service of kids. Last week, there was a fire alarm pulled in the, in the church again. This is the second time. Now, I know this may sound harsh, but every time the, the fire department comes out, it's a 500. If it's not an emergency... It's a, now, please pay attention up here. It's a $500 fine, okay? So I, I know this, you know, you say, how would you enforce this? I don't know, but, but the parents of the children are going to pay that. That's the only way we can do it, okay? So the next time that fire alarm gets pulled, if it, there's five kids standing around, well, then that's 100 bucks from each parent, okay? You say, what are you saying? Supervise your children. Now, Fred had fallen over. Fred got knocked over by one of the kids last week. He fell. Uh, Fred has some heart issues. Uh, he's very helpful around the church, but he fell on his shoulder because the children were just running around. And if, you, if, you're, if the children are running around up and down the stairs, there's nowhere for an adult to go. You know, they're almost going to fall. So after the service, you need to get your children. You need to keep your children by you. Uh, and this is just a, a reminder for us to make sure that we stay uh, you know, focused on these things, okay? All right, um, I think that's it as far as our announcements. After the service, I do need to meet with all the parents of children just so that we can talk with you a little bit more uh, on that, okay? Uh, that's it as far as our announcements. Do we have any birthdays this week? Any birthdays? Anybody celebrating a birthday this week? Next week, yep, next week. Any birthdays? Any anniversaries? And yet, Pedro, it's you and your, you and your wife's anniversary? April 16th. Amen. Amen. All right, that's uh, two days. I'm writing it down. Pedro, April 16th. All right. Amen. Next Sunday. Oh, okay. All right, well, we'll sing next Sunday uh, when you come, and uh, you'll be... How old will you be? Eight. All right. Wow. All right. Well, let's sing happy anniversary to Pedro and uh, his wife, who is not here today. Everybody ready? Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary. God bless you. Happy anniversary to you. All right, Pedro, praise the Lord. What a blessing. And, um, you know, many people don't know. There's always a lot of hands behind the scenes. People, Alex is always picking people up with the van and, and even Pedro. Saturday nights, I'll text Pedro. This person needs a ride, that person. And uh, he's so humble. He, sure, Pastor. Sure, Pastor. I'm like, all right, we got it. And so praise the Lord uh, for that. Last but not least, please do not forget to silence your cell phones, okay? If you would, please take out your si cell phone, put it on silent, turn that thing off. And, uh, you know, unless you're a doctor or someone who needs to be in touch uh, with uh, somebody, but, but uh, go ahead and turn that thing off. Don't forget there is a nursery provided for all children three years of age and under, uh, and um, you're welcome to take your child downstairs um, Sister Zori and Ruth are down there now uh, in the nursery, so uh, take advantage of that opportunity. That's it as far as our announcements. Ushers, would you please come forward? We'll take up our tithes and offerings at this time. Vance, would you please pray for the offering? Amen.
All right, if you would, please go ahead and uh, take your Bibles this morning and uh, turn to Joshua chapter 7. We will have the Word of God up on the monitors also, uh, and uh, we're going to read uh, the Scriptures. It's a, a pretty lengthy portion of Scripture, then we'll, um, we'll pray and then you'll be seated. So if you would, please stand for the reading of God's Word. Uh, if you'd like to find a Bible, there's a Bible in the front of the chair in front of you, most likely. If there's not one directly in front of you, there should be one on the side somewhere. We have Bibles there, but once again, it will be up on the monitor if you would like to uh, follow along. Uh, last week, I preached a message about uh, fleece or faith. And um, this morning, I want to focus... Last week, we looked at the fleece. A fleece is putting conditions on God. And I was a little you know, dramatic with God turned the iron on. Uh, but uh, God, you know, uh, makes someone call by 5 o'clock. If, if this guy calls, then that must mean it, it must be your will for me to date him. No, if he's not saved, it's not God's will for you to date him, okay? Uh, and, uh, you know, a lot of times we put these fleeces out there, and God is not, a, God is not a, a really a million miles near fleeces, okay? Uh, we are to live by faith. Uh, and so the Bible tells us in uh, chapter number 1, but the children of Israel, uh, chapter, excuse me, chapter 7, verse number 1, that is wrong. Um, that's Joshua, that's why. Okay, so we don't have the word there. That's uh, Joshua. Uh, so I am in, uh, you're going to have to disregard that, okay? Um, I am in um, uh, Judges, and unfortunately I put the wrong scripture up there. So you'll just have to follow along with me as I read. This is, uh, is wrong. And so unfortunately, uh, somehow uh, this got uh, messed up. But um, nevertheless, we still have the Bible. Amen? Amen. Then Jerubbabel, which is Gideon. We talked about this in Sunday school. The people of God changed his name. From Gideon to Jerubbabel. You'll notice the prefix Baal. Uh, it's actually false god. And the reason why they did that, it was a derogatory term. I mentioned this in Sunday school. Just like today, a lot of times we're proud to be called Christians. But in early days, when people were called Christians, it was more of a persecution thing than it was a blessing. And so then Jerubbabel, who is Gideon and all the people that were with him, rose up early and pitched beside the well of Herod, so that the host of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the hill of Morah in the valley. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their, uh, into them, uh, their hands, lest Israel vaunt themselves against me saying, Mine own hand hath saved me. Now therefore go to, proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him depart and um, early from Mount Gilead. And there returned of the people twenty and two thousand, and there remained ten thousand. So God is dwindling this army down. The Lord said unto Gideon, The people are yet too many, Bring them down unto the water, and I will try them for thee there. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, this shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee. And of whomsoever I say unto thee, this shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. So he brought down the people under the water, and the Lord said unto Gideon, Every one that lappeth of the water with his tongue as a dog lappeth, him shall thou set by himself, likewise every one that boweth down upon the knee, knees to drink. The number of them that lapped, putting their head to the, wall, to the mouth, were three hundred men. But of the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. O Lord, uh, and the Lord said unto Gideon, By these the three hundred men that lappeth will I save the, thee, save you, and deliver the Midianites into their hands, and let all the other people go, every man unto his place. Let's pray. Father, 
We thank you for your word, dear Lord. We thank you for uh, your wonderful example, dear Father. I pray that you would uh, guide, direct, and strengthen us today, dear Lord. And dear Father, I pray that you would help us to live by faith, dear Father. Dear Lord, I pray that if there's someone here today that does not know Christ as their Savior, that today they would come to a saving knowledge. Those of us who are saved, I pray that you would help us, dear Lord, to uh, increase our faith, dear Father. We'll thank you for it, and we ask all these things in Jesus' name. We do ask them and pray. Amen. Go and have your seats, if you would, please. And uh, we stop short of the scriptures. I'll read more of them towards the end there. Uh, but uh, how God delivered them. Uh, but Gideon, here's the situation, okay? Gideon, he had uh, 32,000, 33,000 men. He had raised an army of 33,000 men, uh, and they're ready to go and to march against the Midianites. Remember, these were God's enemies, right? And so uh, God said, look, there's too many people. Uh, if, if you go and deliver, uh, and I deliver you, you're going to vaunt. The word vaunt has the idea of, of pride, the sin of pride. You're going to brag about how I did this and how I did that. And so uh, that's not faith. And so um, last week we looked at Gideon and his demands. He demanded God do some things, right? Put the fleece. He put the fleece out. If the fleece becomes wet, then it's God's will. But then he said he changed his mind the following day and said, no, if it becomes dry, right? Uh, and fleecing, putting fleeces out there is, is really a lack of faith. It's, it's, it's really rooted in unbelief, right? Uh, there's no faith in that whatsoever. Now, the opposite side of this too is that our faith is important, but our faith must be in God and in the word of God. A lot of people live by, by faith, you know, uh, they say, just take a blind leap. That, that's, there's no such thing as a blind leap with God, right? Faith is based upon, number one, God, and number two, it's based upon the Word of God. So it's not blind at all. We're going to see that today. God dwindle, dwindles down this army from 33,000 all the way down to 300 because God is going to give them the victory uh, and God tells Gideon, uh, because Gideon even is a little faint-hearted. And you'll see that in verse number 13 and 14 as we progress through the message today that uh, God, gives, uh, God gives him a bolster of faith. But the first thing we need to see is, is God's plan. God's plan. What is God's plan? Well, God uh, has, uh, Gideon comes, uh, as I mentioned, with 33,000 men, and that's too many. But number one, it was a difficult plan. I want you to realize that when God calls us to a life of faith, it's not always a life of ease. You know, people want a life of ease today. People don't want to deal with difficult times and, and difficult struggles and, and things like that. They want to uh, have it uh, smooth like butter, right? Uh, they want to have a, an, an easy life. All throughout the Bible, we can see that God always has a plan and that plan is better than man's plan. Amen? God always has a, a plan, but man also has a plan too. We'll talk about that, as a matter of fact, in Luke chapter number uh, 22 and verse number 42. Saying, Father, if thou be willing. Even Jesus said, God, if this was not your plan. You know, I've heard theologians explain this away. Christ did not want to go to the cross, but he was willing to go to the cross. He said, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. People are trying to explain the cup. The cup is the wrath of God. Remember, on the cross, God turned his back upon his own son because he had the sins of the world upon him, right? Remove this cup. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And so sometimes God just like he made his son, so to speak, do the hard thing, God makes us do the hard thing, right? Now, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. 
uh, and uh, Simon uh, answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. But then he says these words, nevertheless, right? You know, a lot of times we, we want to put uh, a, 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 uh, a dot, so to speak, in a sentence where God wants to put an exclamation point. God wants to continue on. Uh, he wants to continue on. They say, nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. We know when the nets went down, what happened? They took in a great multitude, right? So, you see, that's what you and I have to realize. God is a good God. God wants to load you with benefits. And that doesn't mean house, money, wealth, you know, an overabundance of things. That means he just wants to load you with, with wonderful and good and godly things, uh, good, good uh, relationships and, and things of that nature. Uh, and, uh, and so the Bible says, And they beckoned unto their partners. This, the the, the um, draught of fish was so great. And Simon Peter saw it. He fell down at Jesus' feet. This is how humble Peter was. And he departed. He said, depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Uh, and so uh, the first thing that is important for us to see is that sometimes God's plan can be a difficult plan. We see that throughout the Bible, right? Um, we see that I could just give example after example after example. But number two... It was not only a, uh, a difficult, but it was a distinct plan. God does not have us haphazardly going through this world. You know, this, for such a time like this, you know, some people are fearful. You know, if, you know, we're Americans and we think that the whole world revolves around us, but do you know, you realize the world's on fire right now. It's on fire. Iran began last night lobbing missiles into Iraq. Now, if you don't know anything about the Bible, the Battle of Armageddon, which I do not know when will take place, but it is in the future. So men call it World War III. God calls it the Battle of Armageddon. Uh, it, we're setting up for that right now. You think the Ukraine. I don't know if you realize this. Did you ever look at the Ukraine? Russia needs to take the Ukraine back so that it can continue its march over towards Israel. Uh, China is moving on. China will be most likely from the Bible the million man army that comes across. Uh, and how are they going to come across? Because the Euphrates River separates the east from the west, right? Uh, and so that'll dry up. God tells us all these things in the Bible. This is where it is. You see, God has a distinct plan. God in his sovereignty not only has plans for nations, he has plans for your life and my life. Isn't that so wonderful? You know, I can't even plan my own life, let alone my children's lives. My mind gets boggled when I think about all the things that could happen with my children and with their spouses. And, and as the family gets bigger and bigger and bigger, right, it's, it's more difficult to pray. But guess what? God's got the whole world in the palm of his hand, right? And so sometimes I have to step back and realize God has a distinct plan for each and every one of us, even for you. And by the way, for your children. And it starts with teaching your children to be obedient, amen, and not run around the church like wild children causing all kinds of issues and things like that. Uh, and God has a wonderful plan for each and every one of us. May I ask you, who do you think has a better plan for your life? You or God? You or God? Who has? Now, all of us will rhetoric, rhetorically say God, right? But yet some of us are rebelling against that very plan. We're rebelling against that very plan. Jeremiah sums it up by saying this in Jeremiah 29, verse number 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Wow, God with Israel and Hamas and Iran and the, uh, and the Khamenei's over there. Uh, and all of that, right, and uh, Russia and Putin and uh, all of these people, God thinks about me. Wow, isn't that awesome? Think about that just for a moment. I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. It's not like the Lord's like, okay, it's Pastor John. I'm too busy today. John, Pastor John, don't you know it's a bad day to contact me today? Don't you know I ran... 
is in trying to uh, lob missiles into Iraq and, and uh, Putin's trying to move on. And just, just hold on a minute. I'm too busy. That's not our God, amen? That's not the God that we serve. That's the God that some people serve, right? Uh, we learned last week about uh, Baal. The Israelites were worshiping Baal. And even Gideon's father said, hey, if Baal be God, then, then let Baal uh, curse Gideon. But, but Baal was not a god. He's a false god, just like all the other false gods in our society today. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give thee an expected end. And so God's got a distinct plan for your life and for my life. Did you ever think about that? He has a distinct plan. Are you working where you want to work or where God would have you to work? Are you being an influence where you work for the people of God and for the things of God when you get an opportunity? Secondly, the requirements of the plan. So now we, we see that there are some requirements. Salvation is free, okay? It's a gift of God, not of works. But now that you're saved, there's going to have to be some requirements that you and I are going to have to meet. What am I about to say, what I'm about to say could change each and every one of our lives if we would just get a hold of this. The Lord requires three important things. They're not very difficult, but they're three very important things. Number one, you say, what does the Lord require? He requires of us to surrender. Now, we are, we believe in free will. We do not believe that God created human beings as robots, right? We, we believe that a human being has a right to choose whether they will be saved or not. If you hear the word, then today is the day to repent if you've never been saved. You see, God did his part 2,000 years ago on the cross of Calvary. Jesus will never die again. Uh, he died once for the sins of the world, right? But now man, when they hear the gospel, they need to repent and they need to be born again. That's your part. You have a part in salvation. Uh, and uh, you must believe and receive the Lord Jesus Christ, right? We hear the gospel, we believe, we receive, now we are born again, right? But the battle is not about us. Uh, this, let me just say this, the, the, there, there must be a surrender in the Lord's will. We must surrender. Now look with me with this verse. We, a lot of us love to quote this verse, but you notice that there's two very important things tied to the verse. You ready to read it? Let's look at it. For we know that all things work together for good. Here's the requirement. You ready for the requirement? For them that love God. Oh, pastor, I love God. Well, if you love me, what will you do? You'll keep his commandments, right? So there's two there's two um, attachments to this verse. We love to misquote the Bible. We really do. We love to misquote the Bible. You know, uh, someone, you know, um, when we were in Trinidad, I don't want to get into a long, drawn-out story, but Trinidadians, they love to put verses on their cars, and they love to misrepresent the Bible. I, at one time I seen uh, Isaiah where it says, no weapon against me will, will, be, will be used. You know, that... That, now, we could quote that as believers, right? Uh, but we can't quote that when we're doing 900 miles an hour driving in our vehicle, right? Uh, when we're dis disrespecting the cops and the authorities and things of that. Look, I got permission. I'm telling you right now, I see you talking back there. And uh, I got permission from the local government. They said that, uh, that, um, that uh, the turnpike... The speed limit now, it's not 80, but they said that everybody does 80 on it, so I'm safe. I'm not doing 900, I'm only doing 80. As a matter of fact, I keep it two below, 78, and I keep it there, so I'm safe. That's uh, a, a, a side joke there, uh, but um, people love to quote that uh, verse, right? No weapon against me shall prosper, but they misquote that, uh, and uh, here they misquote this. Because, number one, we must love God. But, number two, notice the second phrase there. To them who are called according to his what? Purpose. purpose. Are you fulfilling God's purpose? It doesn't mean that you're perfect. None of us are perfect, right? Are you fulfilling God's purpose? If you're fulfilling God's purpose and you are, and you are loving God, then all things work together for what? For good. For, 
not all Christians, all things are not working together for good. As a matter of fact, God disciplines disobedient and um, children that are out of the way. So number one, uh, we must surrender. Number two, we must submit. Now, no American likes that verse right there, right? Submit. Who are you talking to to submit? Right? You ain't talking to me. We started a war over this submission thing, right? We went out into the harbors of Boston, and uh, uh, we said, you know what, King? Uh, no taxation without representation, right? We took uh, hundreds of uh, thousands of pounds of tea, and we threw them into the, into the harbor. That was the way that we rebelled. Uh, and uh, we said, enough is enough. I think the time might be coming. I know this will scare some of you right out of your pants. The might, time might be coming to where we need to do the same thing again. Our government taxes us all the time in every place. And, uh, uh, and so, uh, you know, we the people. By the way, let me say this. This is going to really shake you up really good. That, you know, that little consti- that, that thing called the Constitution, okay, that, that none of our, our, um, our, um, our Congress or senators seem to know how to follow? Do you know that has a clause in there that says that the people of God, that the people, not the people of God, the people are allowed to bear arms, now, some of you think that's so that they can go out and shoot the chicken in the backyard and they can hunt Bambi and they can do this and they can do that. That's not what it's talking about. You see, our founding fathers came from militant people and they knew that uh, tyrants and tyrancy. You realize that a lot of religions have ruled over the world. Do you want to become like the Middle East? This week, we heard from Dearborn, Michigan, people chanting out death to America. Now, if I can't say something, and if you Americans, that doesn't bother you, then, then, then I, I, you know, we might as well just stop right now and close everything up. I never thought that in America we would hear people chant death to America. I never thought that. Uh, but today, of course, everybody has uh, their rights, right? And, uh, uh, and, and I, I've gotten, you know, a little bit sidetracked here, but submit. We need to submit, to, not to the government, to God. That's not what that word means, submit to the government. Now, there is a time where we submit to the government. That's in the New Testament, and that's not my message, but we need to submit to God. The Lord is not in the business to bless our plans. We must submit to His way. Uh, Many will not submit. Now, the reason why we won't submit because of pride. Do you realize when you boil everything down in this world, just think about this with me for a moment. When you boil everything down... You know, John, John and I have conversations about atheists and agnostics. There's all kinds of people in the world, right? There's all kinds of people, but really there's two types of people. There's saved and there's unsaved. And whether you're an agnostic, whether you're a flat earther, whatever you are, the reason why you are that is because you're full of pride. That's it. You need to submit yourself and you need to be born again. That's it. There's two types of people. There's sinners and there's saints. You're either going your way to uh, uh, heaven or you're on your way to hell. Uh, one way or the other, you could chalk it up to all kinds of things. You could, you could say, I'm educated. I'm professionally educated. Well, God bless you. That works great if you're a doctor or a lawyer or something like that, and we're, one, we're thankful for that. But when it comes to the Word of God, um, we, need to, we need to let God speak and God uh, speaks very loudly and, clo- and, and clearly. And he says here uh, that uh, we are to submit. And uh, what keeps people from getting saved is this idea of pride. Look with me, the Bible says, For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. Now I heard preachers say, and it's a great, it's a great thought here, you will bow. The atheist will bow. The agnostic will bow. The flat earther will bow. The prideful person will bow. But the problem is, is, is you either bow while you're uh, earthly on earth and alive and get saved, or you bow in the presence of God and his angels, and then you're taken by angels and thrown alive into the lake of fire. Did you hear my words very carefully? Chosen. You're thrown alive into the lake of fire, which is the second death. You see, many people teach this idea of soul sleep. Like when 
unsaved people die, their soul just enters into eternity and they're at rest. They're not at rest. Sometimes even in our misunderstanding of the scriptures, we'll say, well, well, praise God that person died because they were in a lot of pain. You don't realize what you're saying. If they're not saved, they're in a lot more pain than they are now. They're in a lot more pain than they are now. The Lord requires not only um, submission, but He requires steadfastness. He requires us to be steadfast. And this is where uh, we're at, you know, this is where this, this uh, meets us today. If Gideon wanted victory, he would have to surrender his will to do the Lord's will. And that's what you and I must do. We must surrender our will to do the Lord's will. You cannot have two reigning supremes in your life, so to speak. You can't do that. You just can't do that with God. He would have to humble himself and proceed by faith. Can 300, now we, we read the scriptures, can 300 defeat 135,000? Well, of course they can. Living by faith is not just an Old Testament idea. You know, a lot of times we, we read about these people and we we uh, lift these people up above to where God would have them. You see, they're not great. They serve a great God. They're not great. A lot of times we think about David and Moses, and, and of course, yes, they were, they were great men of God, but they were only great because they were following God. If they weren't following God, they wouldn't have been great. And it's the same thing with us. If we're following God, we can be great men and women for God, right? We can have great young people for God. But young people have to learn how to obey. They need to learn how to sit still, right? They need to learn to uh, obey and, and, uh, and follow simple rules. You know, um, I know this may uh, sound a little exaggerated, but that's why we build prisons for people who don't know how to follow rules, right? That's why we build prisons for people who don't know how to follow rules. When, they, when you break certain laws, you get yourself what? In trouble, right? That's all we're doing. We're training up children the way that they should go so that they do not break rules so later on they can learn how to be functional and live functionally within society today. Imagine you being told by a police officer, don't do that, right? And you continue to do it. What's going to happen? Well, today you could still get away with it. But back in my day, you couldn't. Uh, living by faith is not just an Old Testament idea. Uh, the New Testament, uh, the New Testament um, uh, people and all who are living today must live by faith. Look with me, if you would, please, in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 6. Uh, the Bible says, but without faith. It's impossible to please who? God. For he that cometh to God, that's you and I, must believe that he is. He is what? A rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So God is no man's debtor, so to speak. If you do things for God and, and you serve God and you surrender uh, and you diligently seek him, then God will take care of you. That's exactly what uh, he is saying here uh, within these passages. Thirdly, we see the results of the plan. We see the results of the plan. So you and I, what, what we must do, we must surrender. We must submit, right? Uh, we can't have, as I mentioned before, the Saint Frank Sinatra syndrome, right? You say, what do you mean that? Well, he did it his way. And many people, they want to do it their way, right? Uh, your way never is a good way to do when we do what the Lord commands of us, certain results can be expected. Certain results can be expected. So I want to look at the scriptures because this is where we did not read. Uh, but uh, in verse number 21, uh, the Bible tells us that they defeated the enemy. So when we do what we're supposed to do, we will defeat the enemy. Now, we don't necessarily have an enemy that is a group of people today, like the Midianites, the Amalekites. We have sin within our lives. We have sin that's out there in the world. And we need to learn to defeat the enemy. The devil is our enemy, right? 
Uh, he's walking around as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. In other words, he's diligent. The, the devil is more diligent than many Christians. He really is. He's diligent. He wants to get people to fall. He wants to get people to fall asleep. He wants to get people to stay out of church so that they don't hear the word of God. But we as God's people, we, we are not some... Uh, we're, we're not um, fooled by his methods, right? God has a plan for our life. The enemy, Satan, has a plan for your life, uh, and that is submit. Now, look what the Bible says here once again, James 4, 7. I'm not going back, I'm moving forward, but he does remind us, submit yourselves to who? God. That's the only way to get victory. You and I are not strong enough to defeat the devil. You and I are not strong enough to defeat the sins that are in our lives. We, you're just never going to do it. People say, Pastor, I try and I try and I try and I try. Well, the thing you need to do is let go. You need to let go and let God give you the victory within your life. That's, it, it sounds so cliche for many people, right? Let go and let God. Well, what does that mean? That means let go of your will and stop trying to do what you want to do and let God take control. Sometimes you'll see it this way. You'll see on a bumper sticker, it'll say, God is my co-pilot, right? I don't know, why do you think, you, that's a prideful statement right there too. Why don't you get out of the driver's seat and let God in? <laughs> you thought you were going to hear something good about that, right? You're, you're full. I'm not, I'm not, in, the, I'm not in, the, in the driver's seat in my life. God is, right? And if you allow God to be the driver's seat, then uh, you're submitting yourselves. And then our part, see, God does his part. Our part is to resist the devil. Now, I'll talk just for a moment. I don't watch television. I, I, I can't stand horror movies. They're so ridiculous. They're so unintelligent, right? You know, like... Let's go hide in the garage where the chainsaws and the axes are. <laughs> right? Like, nope. And then, you know, you see these young ladies open the door. Are these still out there? Like, really, like, I mean, there would be no horror movie with me, right? No horror movie because I'm out of town. I'm moving out. And if I'm, and I, and well, I'll tell you truthfully, if I'm, I got my shotgun, I've got my bazooka, I've got everything, right? And I'm ready to go. But, you know, the, and, and here's where I want to say this, the fallacy, the foolishness of let's open the door and see if he's still there. That's what a lot of Christians do with the devil. They give place. The Bible actually says that they give place to the devil. So that means sometimes they're in places where they ought not to be and they're tempted with things that they ought not to do. Uh, why? Because they have not resisted the devil. When we resist the devil, the Bible tells us that he will flee from us. Now, when I read into that, here's what I understand. The devil is such a lust fiend that when you and I stand against him, he cannot, he cannot control himself. He has to flee and get out and go find someone that he can control. So he flees from us. And that's exactly what God says that he will do. The people of God, uh, not only uh, are, are we um, <clears throat> uh, the results, but we are victorious when we surrender to the Lord. We're victorious. As you read this scripture and you'll see Gideon He's victorious, but he's victorious because God causes confusion within the Midianite army. There's another illustration of this um, with a king uh, called Sennacherib. I got to see that. Colleen's <laughs> like Sennacherib. Um, that's his name. He's the king of Assyria, and. Uh, Israel is surrounded by over 300,000 troops. And God sends an angel to cause chaos. And they all begin to kill each other. And so one morning, 
the poor people of Israel wake up and they're like, let's go out. We're going to surrender, right? This is a true story. We're going to surrender to the king. I won't say Sennacherib again, but uh, to the king. And uh, we will get some food. And if we die, we die. We're dying anyway. So they go out and they realize that all of the Assyrians are dead. True story in the Bible. Who killed them all? God. Who do you think killed the Egyptians for enslaving the people of God? By the way, I don't know if you realize this or not. Do you know many of those nations over in the Middle East, they will be annihilated because of their attack against Israel and on Israel. You say, well, I don't like that. That doesn't matter. God, we're not dealing with what you like here. We're dealing with God says what God says. Many of those nations will be annihilated. They will be destroyed because of their rebellion uh, against God. God will consume them right in their own flesh. That's what he will do. And the Bible talks about that. I don't have time to get into that today. So I don't know about you. I'm on the winning side. Amen. It's not because of my smartness or my greatness or my great looks. It's because of God's great grace. The people of God are victorious. Gideon and Israel enjoyed a great victory. The Lord's plan for your life, my friend, is victory. God wants to give you and I victory. But victory starts with victory over ourselves. Lastly, the Lord's name is glorified. I don't know about you, but this is the best of them all. This is the best of them all. The Lord's name is glorified. Every time we get victory, God's name is glorified. God's name is lifted up. Here, think about this, Israel, right? I don't know if you realize this. Israel is a couple million people. They're surrounded by Arabs. Now, not all Arabs are bad, and I don't want to make that sound as though many of them are saved and many of them are on the way to heaven, but they're surrounded by a billion of their enemies, they, they shoot rockets. Now, you and I, we don't understand this. They shoot rockets all the time. There are always rockets coming into Israel. And one day, uh, God, will, uh, God will annihilate them, and uh, God will uh, cause the people of Israel to have victory. Uh, that just burns some people right up. It really does. But they're God's chosen people, just like you and I are God's chosen people. But the Lord's name will be glorified in all of this. And our, we, we can be part of that glorification when we get victory. You know, we stand and we say, well, I didn't get victory, but God got victory, right? Uh, and we point people and we point uh, people to the Lord in our lives, right? Uh, you know, and, and this is how people, when they watch us and they see us, now we should speak and use words and, and witness, right? But when they see our lives that we don't curse, we don't drink, uh, we, we don't do the things in public that the heathen do. We don't sit around the water cooler and talk about dirty jokes and things like that. Now, if you do that, then you're no witness and God can't use you. But when these people have difficult times, they're going to come to you and say, hey, I noticed you don't talk like that. I noticed you don't do that. I noticed, and, and they're going to say, why? And you're going to say, I'm a religious person. No, I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm on my way to heaven. God saved me. And then you can begin to witness to that person and that person uh, and then, then what are we doing? We're, we're honoring the Lord. That's what we're doing. What are we doing this morning? Well, we're honoring the Lord by uh, being here, by listening to the preaching, by singing. Uh, and uh, everything in return should be done to honor and glorify the Lord. If you're here today and you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, then get saved. If you're here today and you are saved, and by the way, let me say this, and I'm closing. Faith begins the journey faith ends the journey. Faith begins the journey. We have to have enough faith to get going, but faith continues us on so that we can be steadfast. We can be victorious. Uh, and uh, uh, that's all that we have to do. You see, God's already put this plan in motion. We just have to get on his side. Father, thank you for your word today. If there's anybody here today that does not know Christ as their Savior, I pray today that they would come to a saving knowledge. Dear Lord, for those of us who are saved, I pray, dear Father, I know many of us, we start out with faith and we live 10, 15, 20, 25, maybe even 30 years in faith, but then we begin to 
lose focus for whatever the reason may be. We get our eyes off of you for many, many different reasons. I pray today, dear Father, that your people would find their way back to you in a close uh, relationship to you, dear Father. And I pray that you would help us, dear Lord, to enjoy the victories, dear Father. And uh, we'll certainly thank you for it. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. We do ask them and pray. Amen. If you would please stand to your feet this morning. If God's spoken to your heart today, for whatever reason it may be, if you need to be saved, come forward and, and trust Christ. I would love, I, I mentioned this in the announcements, Pastor Latcher got to lead five people to the Lord. Praise God for that. Maybe there's one in here today. Maybe there's five. I don't know. But if you've never been saved, you need to call upon him and be saved. We could take the Bible and show you how you could do that. If you are saved today, would you step out with the Lord? Would you step out with him? And would you go on this journey of faith within your life? Uh, and it will be spectacular. It will be 